This is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how to quickly determine if you have an air blockage in your ductwork or evaporator coil that's making your furnace overheat or your evaporator coil freeze, and we're going to be going over that coming up. It's easy to inspect a filter on a system and you can just visually inspect that, but the problem is as far as checking an evaporator coil up here to see if that's blocked, that becomes very difficult because even after you take the cover plate off right here, you still have another triangle plate. You also have these lines that are coming out so you might not even be able to get the plate off well and you're not going to be able to look down in the inside of that because the furnace is right butt up against it. In the case of an air handler though, you can just visually inspect the bottom because these typically have a slab coil. So you can just look right here. So now I wanna show you the tools that we're gonna use. In order to quickly assess where the airflow problem is in a furnace, I'm gonna show you how to use a basic digital water columnometer and a static pressure tip to measure on both sides of where the blower motor is. So that's called a total external static pressure. We're gonna take a measurement on the return right here. And our second measurement is gonna be either up in this temperature sensor area in that hole or in a hole up towards the top of the furnace. So now we're gonna start that. So now we're at the return duct right where it enters the return plenum at, and we've drilled a hole with a unibit. This is a 3 8 hole, and we're inserting our static pressure tip into that hole. You can see where the arrow is. And so we're just gonna point that arrow away from the furnace in this case, and we're gonna be measuring our static pressure once we turn this furnace on. So you see we have a water column measurement of 0.21. And so that's our static pressure measurement for the return, including the filter, because the filter is actually upstream. It's not close to the furnace. Now let's move over to the other side of the blower motor near the heat exchanger. So just remember that this tip does not have a hole in the front. It just has the holes in the side so the air is blowing by it, but it's reading the static pressure in the side. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a static pressure measurement right where this temperature sensor is because there's already a hole in the furnace. We don't have to drill one with a unibit. So with the power off, we're just going to take this one screw out on the top and we're going to, to move this heat exchanger temperature limit and we're gonna move this so it doesn't short out when we go to turn it on. And we can just put a piece of tin tape over this hole and you see I have myself a little hole to insert the pressure tip inside the furnace. So I'm gonna point this down with the airflow And now we can turn the power to our furnace on. So we already know that we have a problem on the supply side of the furnace because this water column measurement is higher than on the return side. So this is technically the supply side. And so you can take a measurement right here. If this is in a bad location, I'll show you a different location where you can take this reading at. So we drilled a hole towards the top of the furnace with our unibit, and we don't want to drill into the bottom of the evaporator coil because you have their pan here and you also have your coil. And so with the unibit, we're not going to be able to hit the heat exchangers because the heat exchangers are several inches in. And so we're going to put our static pressure tip in there. You see our static pressure measurement is actually a little lower then the other location where we took it at. So our other location, we read 0.87. Now we're reading about 0.84. And that's because we're getting further away from the blower motor. And so let's just go back to that other location for a sec. So if we have a static pressure measurement of say 0.85 here, and that's positive, and we have a negative water column measurement of 0.21, that means that our total external static pressure for this furnace is 1.06. And so that's a very high number, and this furnace's blower motor is rated to operate and be able to attain the proper airflow measurements with no more than 0.5 inch water column when you add your supply side water column measurement and your return side. So we, we know there's a, a airflow problem overall. We know it's on our supply side. Now I wanna check on the other side of the evaporator coil to check our pressure drop across that coil. So now you see we have a measurement of 0.2 inch water column on the supply duct. And so this is the evaporator coil right here. And so you can see we have a huge pressure drop across this coil. And that means that that coil is clogged. So we have 0.85 before the coil and then 0.20 after the coil. So we have a 0.65 inch water column pressure drop. Most of these coils 
will range somewhere between say like 0.1 to 0.35 or maybe maybe 0.4. It depends on the airflow speed, it depends on the surface area of the coil and how dense the coil is. So that's a big problem there. So this static pressure measurement is measuring everything that's going to be downstream from this point right here. And so we know that there's not a problem downstream in the duct. We know that we have a problem in that coil without even visually seeing the dust accumulating on the bottom of the coil. So I'm going to show you in a sec what that coil looks like with a video scope. And then the other thing is I will actually pull it out in the light so you can see how bad the, the bottom of that coil really is. If you're looking for the actual static pressure, like what it should be across any coil, you can look it up as far as the model number online and you're gonna be looking up the performance data or uh, static pressure drop for that coil. You'll have your models here, you'll have your CFM up here, and you'll be able to determine what the dry or wet coil static pressure should be. So dry means that you don't have your outdoor air conditioning running and your coil's completely dry, wet, you know, you're gonna have a higher static pressure because of the moisture on the coil. If you wanna know the airflow speed that this is running at right now in cubic feet per minute, you would take your total external static pressure and you would input that into the performance data of the furnace. And so you'd find that in the installation literature or in the service manual of the furnace itself. And so most furnaces, they say they're rated for 0.5 inch water column as the highest measurement, the highest uh, total external static pressure. And remember that is the 0.21 on the return side plus the 0.8, what do we get? 0.85. And so that's 1.06 inch water column as our total external static pressure. So on this chart right here, we would take that and input that on the side. Unfortunately, we're off the chart because it only goes up to 0.7. Now we're using across this side of the chart, we have our highest fan speed. So we have our black wire on our cooling while we were doing our tests. And so we see that we have, just say we had 0.5 inch as our total external static pressure and we were on our highest uh, motor speed our delivered CFM will be 1,371 CFM. So once you know the airflow speed, you can take your static pressure drop, your performance data for your coil, and you can input your actual CFM at the top and bring it down and line it up with the model in order to determine what your static pressure should be for your pressure drop across that coil. So to give you an example, this is what a coil should look like with a video scope. So now let's take a look at that clogged evaporator coil to see how bad it really is. So it's very dark in here and you can see that's actually dust accumulating on, on that coil right there. So now let's take a look at what that coil actually looks like. This coil is filthy. It's got dust and mold just accumulated onto the bottom of this coil on both sides. In order to clean a coil, you're going to have to take this cover off, take the, the triangle plate out of there or cut it out, or you're going to have to recover or pump down the refrigerant at the outdoor unit in order to then address this problem. So I hope you enjoyed yourself, and if you're looking for, for more HVAC videos, I have them linked down in the description section below. And make sure to check out our free resources that we have over at acservicetech.com, such as our calculators, our quizzes, the articles, the quick tips. And then we also have our refrigerant charting, service procedures for air conditioning book, workbook, and quick reference cards, as well as teachers, PowerPoints, and posters, and things like that. So I hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.